I'm driving to film this reaction video right now, but Black Magic is the only company that gets me so hyped when there's a new release, and then I start reading the spec sheet, and it just drops. This is a confusing camera. There's so many parts that they hit the nail on the head, and then other parts I just don't understand. So I have notes, let's get into it. Everybody has been waiting for a Blackmagic pocket camera to be put into a cube rectangle style body. And finally, it has come. So first, let me start with the things that they really did well. It's the exact same shape and style as the FX6 that I'm filming on right now, so I like that. Dual base ISO, who doesn't love that? And the side panel is so interesting. It's got all the playback controls, something that this Sony FX6 does not have. And it's infuriating when you're trying to play back a clip for a client and you have to stay at fast forward times four speed. You don't know where you are along the clip. You can't scrub with your finger. This side monitor looks amazing. It's bright, unusually bright. I think it's 1500 nits, which for a so operator side LCD screen that doesn't make a lot of sense because it would be next to your face But it's there and I think all OEM monitors should be 1500 nits. That's amazing I use a small HD 502 bright, which is a thousand nits and that does great for me 1500 would be awesome now Let's start going into the things that don't make sense so this type of camera is diverting away from a content creator, right? So it's giving you more professional styling and ergonomics, or so I thought. So for audio, they give you a phantom-powered XLR, except there's only one XLR, and it's mini. This is one of the big reasons that made me switch from my C70 to my FX6, was because I was always using adapters for the two mini XLRs in the C70. Now I'm glad that they had that, that's better than a 3.5 mil jack, but to go to this new Blackmagic camera and only get one port is confusing and a reduced port at that. I'm trying to figure out where does this camera fit? Who is it for? What type of production is it for? And it just gets more confusing. So it comes with an amazing EVF. I love that. I would love to have an EVF. This is one of the things that I said on my Sony FX6 Mark II wish list, is I want to have an, an OEM EVF and I want to have the video out port near the front of the camera. And they did that. They put it right up in the corner and that makes perfect sense so that the cable doesn't have to travel as far to go from getting the signal out of the camera into the EVF. I wish my FX6 had an SDI near the front so I could go straight into my monitor. That would be great. So they did that, good. The EVF looks very high quality, well built, but then it makes you think, so if I'm using an EVF, of course you're setting me up to put this on my shoulder. The issue with that is the camera's here and then the EVF is right here you would not be able to use it in that functionality. You could maybe put it on a tripod and look into it. That would make sense. But it doesn't really make sense to have uh, an EVF on such a short camera, and then that parlays into the next issue that I have, BPU batteries, Sony batteries, the same one that the FX6 uses. They're light, they uh, have a long battery life, and they're fairly reasonably priced. Why not make it V-mount? V-mount is universal. My lights take V-mount, some of my accessories take V-mount, and if you are going to have the camera with an EVF, you need balance in the back. It would make perfect sense to offset that with a, a heavy weighted battery, like a V-mount battery. But having a very lightweight Sony BPU battery is not gonna provide that balance. So now you're front heavy. I just don't get it. It, it. it seems like they're designing it for a certain type of use and then pulling back uh, the features that would fully make it usable there. Or they're introducing uh, limitations. It's not like it's their battery. It's a Sony battery. I'm sure they had to pay a license to use that. Why not just make it a universal V-mount battery? And I think it would help 
all of the ergonomics of the camera. You get multiple D-taps out, you could do whatever. I'm sure there will be a battery plate just like my FX6 had a battery plate, but if you're offering a new camera, just build it in. You know that's what everybody's gonna do. They're gonna stick a V-mount onto it. And then this is probably the biggest issue I have with this camera. When I posted this on Instagram, I had a bunch of people say, are you selling the FX6? Or this is gonna be my new project or my new camera that uh, I'm gonna invest in. And it's actually two issues. The first biggest one is B-RAW only. Now, I am coming at this from a camera operator for corporate interviews and documentary work. That's where I live, so that's my perspective. And if I am doing my job, what happens is I show up, I make an interview, we film it, and then I hand off the footage right then and there. Usually the client has a hard drive, we transfer it from a computer to hard drive, they take it, and I never hear from them again besides a paid invoice. That's how I like it. B-RAW only adds a hurdle, it adds an obstacle. So a lot of these production, or they're not even production companies, they're agencies, they're end clients, they don't really know what to do with a raw workflow, and I'm not gonna be the operator who forces them into a foreign workflow. In fact, I wish my FX6 had MP4, an even easier codec to hand off to someone. Sometimes the production houses that I send this to, they are not well-versed in complex post-production, put it that way. They just want an MP4, H.264, H.265. Sometimes my MXF files give them trouble. So B-RAW doesn't make any sense for me. Now I'm having to convince them, oh, do you guys edit on DaVinci? No, you don't? Okay, so uh, if you're on Adobe or Final Cut, all you need to do is add this plugin and it'll take in the B-RAW footage. Well now, how many computers are they gonna have to get this plugin for? Do they have remote editors who have this plugin? Um, it, it's, is your computer up to date? with the right firmware to get this plugin, now I'm a problem, right? I'm introducing problems to my client. This could all be solved with a universal codec that everybody can use and process. I wish there was one. There is, it's ProRes. If I can get ProRes to anyone, they're fine. Blackmagic, for some reason, has been taking out the ability to do ProRes on their cameras, making it B-RAW only, and that would, if I wanted to deliver that footage, then I would have to transcode. That means the client wouldn't get it right then and there, which is when they feel most confident and trusting that they, the project is done, right? They don't want a freelancer taking home their copy of the footage. You're introducing variables, and, and that's what I'm, I'm not understanding. And then the other one, the other thing that is really making me completely cross it off the list, for me, is no internal ND, and I don't understand that. Their G2 series has ND, their 12K has ND, their Pocket 6K has ND. If you're gonna build out the camera and make it bigger, why are you pulling away things? I'm pretty sure the Pocket 6K has too many XLR, so it just doesn't make sense. And I know this is a lot of complaining, but it doesn't make sense because it, th these limitations seem voluntary. That's the part I don't get. If they had never put out a camera with ND or more than one XLR, I would understand. But the fact that they are making a bigger camera just doesn't make sense to start pulling out features. Because if these features were there, this would be a fantastic A cam and B cam. It just doesn't make sense you know what else doesn't make sense? It's $3,000. That is an incredible price. I could get two of those for the price of this Sony FX6. And, and it, it's, they're, they're just these little things that are on the cons side of the list that are saying, you can't do it. it, you, it it's more trouble than it's worth. So I, I am trying to think, 
who is this camera for, right? Maybe it's not for me and that's, that's fine. It's not for me. So if you're an event shooter and you're running, gunning around, the EVF doesn't really make sense, nor does looking at the camera on the side. So I don't really know about an event shooter. A corporate shooter, like myself, who's really just doing um, polished interviews. There's no proper audio. There's only one input source. That's kind of a buzzkill for me. The, the dock shooter, who is maybe has a sound guy, that sound guy is going to handle all of our audio. I don't need to worry about that. In fact, I have one mini XLR. He can just send me reference sound. That'd be great to have. Except there's no ND. And if you're in dock, you can shoot a dock with um, filters in front in a matte box. It's just much more difficult. And some documentary situations don't allow for that. To be switching filters, to be switching whatever. Internal ND makes so much sense. So I don't see using for docs. Content creators, the shape of it doesn't make a lot of sense. Usually a content creator wants a smaller camera that they can go sideways or horizontal, vertical. They can move in and out. It's quick, snappy. This doesn't seem like that, especially with an EVF. It doesn't make a lot of sense. So maybe it's just used for cinema applications where they will have a sound guy or sound crew they will most definitely be using external ND filtration in matte boxes and they will build out the camera and make it fit to their needs. For $3,000, I don't think you can go wrong with that. It just seems like a missed opportunity when they could have gotten every single one of these videographer types included with very minimal uh, feature expansion. Maybe they're going to offer a pro version of this in the next year. That would be cool. I would happily pay $4,000 to get all of those things which are in their other cameras in this camera. So I don't understand it. Um, like I said, I get so pumped about these, these uh, product releases and it takes about eight seconds for me to start reading. Oh, doesn't have that, doesn't have that. And it doesn't seem like there's any rhyme or reason. There's also no multiple video outports. You got the EVF, which is, uh, I believe, proprietary, and you have the SDI, great for an external monitor. But if you want a transmitter on there, there is no secondary video out option. So then that would hurt the cinema use, right? You have to have uh, usually a uh, wireless video transmission, a monitor going, uh, maybe something for the AC, and it's just limited and it seems like for no reason. So that's my gripe, that's my view. If someone can pinpoint what this camera is actually the perfect use for, I would love to hear it because I can't see it. And uh, it just, I've said this so many times before, but Black Magic could be the king of this industry. They have software with Resolve. They have hardware with their cameras and a whole bunch of other uh, items, but they just don't seem to hit the mark. If they had put this hand, put this camera in the hands of pretty much any videographer, whether it's a DP or a corporate shooter or an event shooter, I feel like they would have easily said, it needs that. Of course it needs this. Why would you take that out from the camera that you're modeling it after? I don't know, doesn't make sense. I'm stoked that they are putting out new products. I'm annoyed in how they're picking and choosing features when they could just give it out and I don't think it would actually be more expensive. And if it is more expensive, a lot of Blackmagic users would be happy to pay for those features. That's it.